Hi, my name is Jesse Connors. I'm the founder of True Life. And before I answer the question, what is True Life? I would like to pose a question back to you. What do you think True Life is? You might think that it's fame and money, and that would be a good response if it were true. I have met Elvis Presley's stepbrother, Rick Stanley, and heard him speak many times about the addiction that killed his brother. You may think that I'm referring to his drug addiction, but I'm not. Rick says that drugs didn't kill Elvis, fame did. He explains that when Elvis saw his fame disappearing, he turned to drugs to try to counterbalance the loss. Many of us idolize celebrities, but don't realize that many of them need drugs to put them to sleep and drugs to wake them up and drugs to keep them going. This trend we see with famous people exists because that fame turned them into something that they were never intended to be. When you were reflecting on what true life is, you also might have thought that money is the answer. Well, I would like to introduce you to Andrew Jackson Whitaker Jr. and his wife, Jewel, and their granddaughter, Brandi Bragg, who are posing for a photo after being interviewed on NBC's Today in December of 2002. He was already well-to-do, but winning the Powerball jackpot of nearly $315 million pushed him over the top. His family didn't lack a thing. Just the paint job on one of Brandy's many cars cost $16,000. They could buy anything that was for sale. But Jack Whitaker doesn't think that winning the Powerball game was worth it. He said in his interview with the Associated Press, I don't have any friends. Every friend I've ever had practically has wanted to borrow money or something else. And of course, once they borrow money from you, you can't be friends anymore. And that was just the beginning of his sorrows. After winning the jackpot, he had to confront 460 lawsuits. Thieves stole hundreds and thousands. His wife left him, and sadly, his granddaughter, who was to inherit millions on her 21st birthday, was found dead at 17. The state's autopsy said Brandy had pills and a syringe tucked away in her clothes and died with cocaine and methadone in her system. Even though this is tragic, it's not an uncommon story for those who are wealthy. Next, I want to introduce you to Stacy and Samantha, whom we met coming out of a restaurant on a very cold night in Raleigh, North Carolina. Thankfully, when we asked them what life was all about, they seemed to forget about the cold and forget about the camera. Here they are. are. <laughs> What's your name? Stacy. Stacy. Sue. Sue, okay. Um, Stacy and Sue. All right. What? You guys can talk to each other. This is just fine. You guys can help each other out with these questions. <laughs> Come up with a collective answer. Okay. Are you ready? This is a deep one. Go for it. What is life about? Hmm. Love. I was going to say love, yeah. Love. I think so. And helping other people. They are on track with their answer of love, but love can take many forms. To understand better, I asked the girls what they want that they can't have. Listen to this answer. I wish that I could have unconditional love from someone. Yeah, I think, um, I think that's what everyone wants, right? I mean, they want... Be accepted the way you are. Yeah, and I think... I think that's hard. That's, that's true for yeah. me. Samantha's right. Unconditional love is rare and hard to find. So I asked the girls with whom they would want to find unconditional love. Who do you want to find un unconditional love with? I think you can, well, I sort of have it with my dog, I guess. <laughs> it's just that he's just a dog and I love him, but he's still just a dog. He's a pretty cool dog. He's a pretty cool <laughs> dog, but he is still a dog. Yeah. <laughs> Their answer cracks me up every time I hear it. But we did move closer to the real answer, and this is how it played out. Okay. So, do you believe in unconditional love? Do you believe in unconditional love? Do I love? believe in it? Uh, no. <laughs> See? And she wants it. <laughs> so. But I've been taught that there isn't. Are you referring isn't. to a man? No. Just in general, unconditional love in general. I'm really referring to my parents, actually. Yeah, parents. Yeah. It's true for yeah. me? Yeah. As long as I do everything right, then they like me. <laughs> the rest of the time, they don't. That's true. Yeah, for me, it's probably a man. 
For no. Sue, we'll go deeper with her parents. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I do. So Sue is implying that if her parents loved her, that she would be complete. And Stacy says that she's looking for a man. But there are many people that have great relationships and they still feel empty and are looking for true life. So fame, money, and relationships don't bring you true life. I would love to share with you what true life is. God created you for much more than fame, money, and human relationships. He created you to have a relationship with Him. Genesis 1-1 tells us that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. God created it all, including you and me. This means that He owns us and He sets the rules because He is God and we are not. The Bible also tells us that we have all chosen to rebel against His commands. We have all chosen to rebel against His purposes for us. You know what? I had a bunch of sin in my life. I still do battle it. What about you? Let's look at a few examples. Have you ever told a lie? Have you ever held a grudge or resented another person? What about selfishness? Have you ever pushed ahead of someone else in a long line? These are all things the Bible tells us are wrong, but that we are all challenged by. We are all sinners in need of a savior. We have broken God's law and there are consequences. Romans 6.23 says that for the wages of sin is death, but that the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. At our jobs, we look forward to Friday, the day we get paid for the work we have done. In the same way, the Bible says that the wages of our wrong choices is death. It is what we have earned. Because God is holy and just, He must punish sin. If God didn't, then He would not be just. Let's suppose that you and I are among the witnesses to a crime. We go to court to testify and learn that a video camera caught everything. The video is shown and there is no doubt who did the crime. Though he is clearly guilty, the perpetrator pleads for mercy, listing all the good deeds that he believes set off his guilt. Just like the perpetrator by our own admission, we are guilty as well. No matter how much good we do with our life, we earn eternal death. This means that we are all bound for judgment in hell, unless there is someone that can take our place. Romans 5.8 says that God demonstrates his love towards us, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You know, the greatest exchange in all of history took place on the cross. We give Christ our sin and he gives us his righteousness. Jesus Christ conquered death, offering you eternal life. So the question is, how do you receive true life? Well, the Bible tells us that true life is a gift from God, not something that we can earn or deserve. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 say, For by grace you have been saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God not of works, lest anyone should boast. The key is to accept the gift that God has already provided for you, to believe it and to state your acceptance of it. Romans 10, 9 says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Why would God do this for you? It's because he loves you and he wants you to have true life. John 10, 10 says, I have come this is Jesus talking. He says that I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Here is where true life is found and knowing the one who created you and the fulfillment, peace, and love that he intended for you. And you can only know what his purpose is for you if you repent and believe what the Bible says. If you want this true life, I'd like to guide you in talking to God and accepting his gift. Now, when you accept his gift, it's not a one-time thing. You live your life every single day for Christ, and he will guide you and give you the strength that you need. But this is the time where you make that commitment to him, and you will see this change in your life, this power. It's called the Holy Spirit, 
and you'll become born again. You'll become a new creation and you'll have the true life that God so desires for you to have. This is a prayer that is committing this time to him and your new life with him. The prayer doesn't save you, but this is a dedication prayer. Will you pray this prayer with me if you're ready to dedicate your life to Christ? I hope you do. Just can repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. I know that you are holy and that you are Lord. Forgive me for my sin. I believe that you died on the cross for me. I know, Father, that you rose from the dead and that you conquered my sin. And now I know that you are Lord. There is nothing, nothing that compares to you. I realize this now. Father, I want true life. Send your Holy Spirit and put your Holy Spirit in me and give me strength to live for you. I love you so much. Thank you so much for this beautiful gift that you've given and this opportunity to live the life that you've given to me for you. In Jesus' name, amen. There is nothing, nothing that can compare to this moment if you've sincerely dedicated your life to Christ. True Life is all about helping you get to a church. Just go ahead and click on the locator button. It's directly above me. And we will be able to get you to a church where people will love you and you'll find your new family. Make sure you're staying in his scriptures as well. They will nourish you and feed you and you will find true life through them. Thank you for watching. And please continue to tell others about this ministry right here on truelife.org.